Spinning techniques play a divisive role in martial arts. Either you do them and you love them, or you don't do them and you hate them. I think the reason most people don't do spinning techniques is because they don't understand how to do them, A, and B, they don't see their importance in fighting and self-defense. Me personally, I think spinning kicks, spinning back fists, spinning elbows are a vital piece of not only fighting, but also self-defense. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I teach people to go from not spinning at all to throwing double spinning roundhouse kicks and explain why I think all of that is important for self-defense. So make sure you're subscribed and you have notifications turned on and let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do before we do any spinning is establish the pivot. I like to introduce the concept of spinning to my students by first getting them to shift over to face their opponent. So we're going to work on the lead foot pivot. In this case, what I mean is you're going to take your lead foot, step across to either one o'clock or if you're southpaw, 11 o'clock. Then after that, you're going to pivot on that lead foot to turn yourself over to nine o'clock or again, three o'clock if you're in southpaw. Again, I come from here, cross my center line, keep my heel off the ground, pivot my weight, boom, there I go. This is an evasive and intrusive movement. I'm using this to cut an angle to follow up with big, powerful strikes at an angle my opponent can't counter. One of my favorite ways to set up a lead pivot combination is with a high-low high combination. In this case, what I'm gonna do is go jab up top, jab to the body, cross up top. Again, I come in here, one, two, three. Then, after I've established that pattern, what I'm gonna do is go high, low, but step across my center line and pivot into that high. I'm using that body jab to hide the fact that I'm stepping off center. Body jabs aren't just dropping straight down towards your opponent. You also wanna add a slight lean off to the side in case your opponent decides to shoot straight down where your face is. So while I'm doing that, I'll step across and pivot into my cross. Then from there, I'll add a liver shot, I'll come in with a roundhouse kick, whatever I wanna do. Again, I'm gonna come in here, one, two, three, high, low, high, and finally, high, low pivot, cross, liver shot. So for the sake of consistency, we're gonna call the lead foot pivot shift a quarter spin. Meaning, by the time we're done, we're gonna to learn to go from quarter spin to half spin, full spin, and then all the way around. We're working in a full circle. That being said, let's now move on to a half spin. Starting again with the high, low, high. We go here, we go high, low, high. Establish the pattern again, one, two, three, and now I go one, two, but I commit my weight too far towards four o'clock, meaning my weight isn't facing my opponent, it's too hard to shift. Instead of trying to course correct and go this way, I'm gonna turn over my rear shoulder and throw a back elbow or a back fist. Again, facing the camera, I'll go here, one, two, three, one, two, oh crap, boom, right there. I'm now half spinning. I end up facing away from my opponent, but still capitalize and throw a strike. That strike will be determined by how far away I am from my opponent. If I'm right here, boom, there's my elbow. If I'm a little bit farther away, there's my hammer fist, there's my back fist, whatever your rule set is. The point is, figure out how close you are to your opponent and throw the appropriate strike. I like the back elbow. Sometimes you wanna throw the back fist. It doesn't really matter. The important thing to remember is at this point, I'm not throwing a spinning strike. You can carry your weight over, there's nothing wrong with that, but A, that's not where we're at in the video, and B, I can throw a good enough strike from here without turning myself all the way over. And from here, it's also easy for me to follow up on the other side, meaning I'm not throwing myself off balance, committing so far to swing with that spinning back fist. Again, that's not wrong, just not the way we're doing it right now. So, so far, we've gone quarter spin, with the lead foot pivot, and we've gone half spin with the back elbow or the back hammer fist, whatever one you prefer. Now, let's go for a full spin, meaning I'm gonna go from facing 12 o'clock, facing six, back to 12 o'clock. And instead of throwing hands, we're gonna throw our first kick. To do this, you're gonna need to know how to throw a hook kick, which fortunately for y'all, I have a tutorial on that right here. I'm gonna go from here. I'm gonna take my lead foot, once again, step across my center line, and turn and look at six o'clock. From here, I'm once again gonna spot my target. You can see my hip is turning into this strike. I can't just turn at the shoulder, I have to let my hip get engaged. From here, as my hip pumps back, I'm gonna lift my leg, swing it around, and allow my lead foot to pivot with me. 
I'm not keeping this foot locked out. I have to spin on the posting foot. As long as this foot is fluid, I'm gonna be able to do this movement. I'm not really concerned with how the kick looks right now. I'm concerned with being able to do that little pirouette. So again, I'm gonna come here, step across, turn, bring the leg around. One more time, a little faster. So this spin is generated by the weight of my leg swinging across to bring me back where I originally started. I want to swing the full force of my leg around and I'm going to let that carry me on my posting foot. It's hard to do slow, but you have to figure out how to do that with control so that you can do it with speed. So one more time, I come here, step across, turn, spot the target, lift, boom, and there I go. So, so far we figured out the quarter spin with the lead pivot, we figured out the half spin with the back elbow, and now we figured out the full spin to set us up for the wheel kick. Now, let's figure out how to do the double spin, which sounds really scary, but honestly, it isn't. Nice and slowly, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna once again have my lead foot step across my center line. Then from here, I'm gonna turn around and spot my target. Now, I'm gonna fake like I'm throwing that wheel kick, but I'm gonna put it down, now back where I originally started, but in southpaw. From there, I'm gonna throw my new rear leg, which was originally my lead leg, as a roundhouse kick. I come in here, one, two, three, four. It's a four step process, but adding a little more athleticism to it, I'm gonna come here now, step across, turn. Now, as I go to shift my weight, I'm gonna lift my rear leg up in the air. I'm gonna use this leg as a hurdle that I have to jump over, like so. I come in here, step, turn, lift, Boom, there's my jump roundhouse kick. One more time, I come in here. One, two, three, four. That little hurdle helps me propel myself over to my opponent. Is it the most necessary thing of all time? I have no idea, but it does look cool and it's fun. So let's put that into the sequence. I'm gonna come in here, high, low, high. Again, high, low, high. And now I'm gonna go high, low, turn, boom, there we go. One more time, one, two, three, one, two, boom. Now, here's the cool thing about the double spin. You can also make it a double kick. What I mean by that is, as I go to do my spin, I'm gonna first throw the wheel kick and follow it up with the roundhouse kick, which looks like this. I step across, I'm gonna turn. Now I'm gonna throw my wheel kick, which is gonna open up my hips to set up the roundhouse kick. One more time, I come here, step, throw the first kick, follow with the second kick. A little faster, I come here. So running through our whole sequence, we went step over, pivot into the cross, then the liver shot. Then we went step over, turn, back elbow, or back fist, whichever one you prefer. Then we went full spin and through the wheel kick. Then we went double spin, stepped across and went into the roundhouse kick, or the crescent kick, whichever one you prefer. The point is we worked our way from here to here, to here, and then all the way back. So if you can do the lead foot pivots, you can do any amount of spinning that you want. I promised to explain why I thought spinning was important for fighting and for self-defense. For fighting, it's pretty obvious. It's a skill that you can keep in your back pocket. If you are able to spin and pivot effectively and your opponent can't, then you have an advantage over him. But the fact of the matter is, spinning attacks don't even have to land. Most of the time, my spinning strikes don't land but they get my opponent thinking that they might. And at that point, he's worried every time I step over, I'm gonna turn into a spinning back fist, spinning kick, whatever. Which means he's not paying attention to the fact that I'm gonna explode in and throw regular, more conventional strikes. If you can teach your opponent that you're able to spin, it suddenly beats him psychologically. But now, let's talk about the self-defense edge of spinning techniques. I don't recommend you break into a double spinning back kick every time you get in an altercation, but picture this. If you're clinching up with somebody and you push them away, what's the first thing you should do? You should turn and run away, which is very similar to the motion you'll take when you go to throw a spinning kick. So learning how to throw spinning techniques will teach you how to be balanced to go from facing here to facing the opposite direction. And if you're running away from a self-defense situation, it's never a bad idea to go from here, add a little bop, and then run away. So no, you don't necessarily want to be throwing spinning hook kicks in self-defense, but being able to move with balance in any direction that you want is very important for fighters, for self-defenders, for anybody who wants to fight in a realistic way. Now, 
I don't think it should be a priority, but it is a tool that can help you get better at fighting and self-defense. And for what it's worth, I just think spinning techniques are a lot of fun. And honestly, it's okay to have fun with your training from time to time. Mix it in, see what you can accomplish. Bottom line, I think spinning kicks, spinning elbows, spinning back fists are all important parts of martial arts and self-defense. And really, I don't think they're as complicated as people say they are. We all mastered them in however long this video is. All that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, if you feel like you learned something, if you feel like you mastered how to spin, then please be sure to subscribe, tap the notification bell, like, share, and leave a comment. This has been Rob from Combat Self Defense. I want to thank you guys for all the hard work. Thank you for the hard work yet to be done, and I'll see you next time.